I started my bachelor degree at the University of Tehran, which was the top university in Iran. I studied my, my background in material engineering, and then I did also my master there, so two years master. And then uh, I started working in two big companies after I finished uh, my master's degree. Mm -hmm. But then after one and a half years, I was quite successful in my position in those companies. But after one and a half years, I got bored and uh, I decided to, to get back to the university. So I came to Australia and I did my PhD in materials engineering. This one is my first postdoctoral research position. I was very lucky that I, uh, right after my PhD, actually, when I submitted my thesis, I found this job, and then I came to Sydney. I always wanted to come to Sydney because I believe that uh, there are lots of opportunities in terms of research and also in terms of uh, in uh, having connection with the industry in Sydney. I always wanted to be a hero uh, <laughs> to save people's lives, and uh, when I was a kid, I thought that. Uh, one, there is only one way to be a hero, and you have to be a doctor. So I tried to kind of uh, put myself in a doctor kind of position, but then I realized that uh, I'm not able to be a doctor because uh, I can't see uh, people's bleeding, you know, and then people are, um, they have injuries. So I, I, I didn't, I wasn't disappointed. So I tried to find another way to, to save people's lives. And materials engineering has a, a broad uh, kind of application in different fields. You can be a material engineer and work in a medical application devices. You can be a material engineer and work in aerospace. So material engineering is a very good, uh, has a very high chance for people who want to, to, uh, to come on to work in a different disciplines. Yes, my research here at UTS is uh, I focus on developing a very small sensor. Uh, I call it fingertip size sensor. So the sensor can uh, analyze human breath because the aim of this project is to detect uh, diseases in human body through analyzing human breath. So instead of doing a blood test, which I believe that is uh, it's painful, it's expensive, and most of the time it takes time to, to get the results. Uh, there are simple way like breath analysis that you can breathe onto the sensor and uh, this is a non-invasive method that you can breathe onto the sensor and, and the sensor can analyze your breath and gives you more information about, about your body. There are a variety of diseases that uh, this mobile diagnosis method can detect like for example uh, you can detect diabetes, lung cancer, actually different types of cancer, lung cancer, breast cancer. You can also detect uh, kidney failure, liver diseases and it's not only limited to uh, physical diseases, uh, it can be also useful in some mental diseases like people also reported that uh, for in, like in case of uh, schizophrenia they can also detect the schizophrenia by analyzing human breath. In terms of um, starting the, the commercialization kind of uh, process and then finish the whole like proof of concept, making the real device and make it like available for the mass production, I think we can do it in like less than five years. But in terms of how, uh, what is the process after that? Because I I'm not 100 percent sure how hard is the process because this device is going to be a deal with a real human, you know. So you are so you are talking about uh, taking care of human's health. So it's uh, it's it's very uh, it's a very serious topic that should be like uh, go through lots of ethical you know uh, passes uh, to be to be approved for, by government by 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 ethic. But I think in terms of uh, finalizing the platform and make it ready to, to analyze human breath and give you very reliable results and make it as a small device uh, is not far.